Hello. You're listening to a piece of music being performed by me using live looping. When making music in this way, you play something, the computer records it and then plays it back in a continuous loop. While it plays, you can play and record something else, and so on, creating layers of sound. It's a bit like being a one-man band, but without the embarrassment of having cymbals strapped to your knees. I'm going to explain my technique for live looping using Ableton Live software. Most people using this technique control the software with a foot pedal, but I'd like to show you an alternative method without using a pedal, so that you concentrate on playing and let the computer do the looping for you. It will also enable you to perform more complex looping pieces that would be physically impossible with a pedal unless you have more legs than a centipede. This video is in four sections. If you are already quite expert with Ableton, sections one and two may be a little basic for you, so I've given you the timings here in case you wish to skip to the part that interests you. If you're familiar with Ableton Live, you'll know that recording loops is done using the session view. For this demo, I've set global quantization to one bar but as you get into this technique, you can experiment with using other values. I'm going to start playback with the metronome on, so that you can hear it. Then in order to record a loop, we're going to click on a session view slot at some point during a bar, and Ableton will start recording at the beginning of the next bar. Then you sing and play for however many bars you want to record, click again before the end of the last bar, Recording will stop and then playback will commence in perfect time at the beginning of the bar. When you want to stop the clip playing, you can click on the stop button here. So let's have a go at that. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Of course, clicking a mouse while playing an instrument is not very practical, so we need a method of automating the process. For this, we use MIDI control. I've connected a MIDI keyboard to the computer. If I click on the MIDI button here, you'll see that the screen turns blue. If I now click on the first slot in track one of session view and play a key on the keyboard, that key gets allocated to that slot. And I can continue doing this for subsequent slots, for just as many slots as I want to use for my pace. I also need to allocate a key to the stop button. In addition, I'm going to allocate some continuous MIDI controllers to the mixer level and pan control for the mixer level, I'm going to touch the modulation wheel. And for the pan control, I'm going to touch the pitch bend control. If you look at this list here, you will notice that all the controllers I've assigned have been transmitted over MIDI channel 1. Now, if I reset my MIDI keyboard to transmit on MIDI channel 2. I can now repeat the process for track 2, allocating the same notes to equivalent slots in session view. And the same with the continuous controllers. And I could repeat this process again for track 3 using MIDI channel 3 and so on for as many tracks as I decide I need for my piece. Now if I press the MIDI button again, if I move those controllers you'll see it has an effect on the level of channel 2 and similarly 
for the pan control and if I now arm this track and I press the appropriate key on the keyboard it will cause recording to commence in clip one of the session view. And I can press the stop button to stop it as well. If we were doing live looping using a foot pedal, at this point we would program a MIDI pedal like this Behringer FCB 1010 to send the appropriate MIDI notes to enable us to control the various functions with our feet. For this pedal free technique, we are going to place the MIDI commands into a MIDI track in the arrangement view at the appropriate place on the timeline. But first we need a way of routing these commands out of Ableton and back in again to control the program just as if we were using an external keyboard or foot pedal. To do this we need to create some virtual MIDI ports on our system. If you have a Mac then you already have everything you need installed on your system. You need to go to the launch pad Select Audio MIDI Setup and then go to Window, Show MIDI Window. Then click on the ISE driver which will be greyed out like this. So we need to make the device online and that's all we need to do. However, if you're using Windows, you will need to install some additional software. Here are some examples of programs you can download which will install a virtual MIDI port on Windows. Many of them are free. Unfortunately, some of the free ones have not been updated recently and you may find they are incompatible with the newer versions of Windows. So check the system requirements before choosing which one to install. After setting up a virtual MIDI port either on your Mac or Windows PC, we now need to set it up for use in looping. Start Ableton and go to Preferences. Go to the MIDI Sync tab and look at the list of MIDI ports. You should see whichever sound module you have attached to your system listed as both an input and an output. In addition, now you will have the virtual MIDI port, which in this case is the ISE driver, if you're using Windows, you'll see whichever virtual MIDI port you've installed in your system listed in the same way. Now, we need to select the ISE driver as a track output. In addition, we need to set the ISE driver as a remote control input. Now, I'll just mention here that it's very important that you don't select the track input on the ISE driver. If you do, that will enable MIDI signals to loop around and around your system. You'll get MIDI feedback and your system will crash. So make sure you leave this one unchecked. We are now ready to set up some loops. Now I've created a series of short MIDI clips and saved them to the browser. I'm going to drag three of these clips into the timeline like this. You can see that I've labelled these clips 1R, 1P and S, which means record into clip 1, play clip 1 and stop the clip. If I look at the contents of each clip, you will see that it contains a single MIDI note, in this case the note C-2, which you will recall earlier I programmed to initiate recording into clip 1. If you look at uh, the context of 1P, you can see that it's identical. It's the same command. So it's just telling me to click on that clip again. Finally, if I look at the contents of S, it contains the note A sharp minus 2, which is the note that I allocated to stop the clips in that particular track. So I've got the three commands, record, play, and stop. Now I'm going to use this first MIDI track labelled T1 control to control audio track 1. 
So I need to send the MIDI output to the virtual MIDI port over channel 1. Similarly, the second track is going to control this second audio track. So we do the same, but this time over channel 2, and so on for as many tracks as you wish to use. It is possible to use a single MIDI track to control all your audio tracks if you have a unique MIDI event assigned to each clip in the session view. However, I find it very useful to have a separate MIDI track controlling each audio track because as you'll see it gives you a very visual representation of the structure of your piece when you're finished. So we're going to go back to arrangement view. We have our three MIDI commands placed into this first MIDI track. So what's going to happen if we start playback these the notes inside these clips will be sent out over the virtual MIDI port looped back into Ableton where they will control recording into track one. So if I was to press play as the cursor moves past these notes at bar three it will start recording it will record for two bars and then at bar five it will start playing back where it will play back for a further two bars and then stop. Now that's not a terribly interesting sequence so let's just move things around a little and make it a bit more interesting. Let's have this one playing for a little bit longer. I'm going to copy these commands into the other tracks. And then I'm going to stop all three tracks at the same time. So now what's going to happen is at bar 3 we're going to start recording on track 1. At bar 5 track 1 will start playing back but we'll start recording in track 2. At bar 7 track 2 will start playing back and we'll start recording in track 3. At bar 9 all three tracks will be playing back until we get to bar 13 where everything will stop. So that's a relatively simple sequence of just three loops. But that's just the beginning. To show you where you can take it, here's one of my pieces that I've prepared ready for performing. It's called Equinox. You can hear a performance of this piece if you look on my YouTube channel. As you can see here, I have 10 audio tracks, all armed, ready for recording. And if I scroll down here, you can see 10 MIDI tracks which will control the recording into various clips in those tracks. I'll just zoom in a little bit so that you can see what's going on more clearly. You can see I have various playback and stop events, various record events in red. Now look at this bar, bar 112. Imagine if I had to do that with a pedal. I'd have to press eight different foot pedals in the course of a bar while still playing my instruments at the same time. It just wouldn't be physically possible. So I can create much more complex compositional structures than would ever be possible with a pedal. And all I have to do to perform these pieces is press the space bar to start the sequence and then I can concentrate on playing my instrument. Just a couple more ideas that you may find useful. If I scroll down this piece, see down here you can see I've made my own click track. This is just a loop that I've pre-recorded with a click in. I just click on that then you can see what it contains. So it's just got a four ticks to the bar there. 
Um, I use that rather than Ableton's own metronome because, for one thing... I can choose the sound that I want to use. For another thing, I can actually send that click track to a separate output on my sound module into which I then plug an earpiece so that I can hear the click but the audience listening to my performance can't. You'll notice also that I don't have the click going all the way through the piece. It actually just stops at bar 10. Because by the time I've got to that point in the sequence, I've established the rhythm sufficiently in the loops I've recorded to not need it anymore. So you don't have to have it ticking away in your ear the whole time. Also, if you look here, grouped together, I actually have another set of 10 MIDI tracks here. And each track here contains a single MIDI clip lasting the whole duration of the piece. And if you look inside one of them, you'll see that I've drawn automation curves for modulation and for pitch bend. And if you recall from earlier in the video, I actually allocated these controllers to control the mixer level and the pan control of each track. So these will modulate those controls as the piece progresses. So it's a little bit like having somebody mixing the sound for you as you play. So that's my method for live looping without a foot pedal. If you use your imagination, you can use this method to control any parameter in Ableton that can be controlled over MIDI, such as switching audio effects on and off, or using continuous controllers to change the level of an effect. If you make any music using this method, good luck and I'll be interested to hear it. If you have any questions, please get in touch and I'll do my best to answer them. Please also have a look at my YouTube channel, where you'll see a number of videos of pieces I've written and performed using this method. Thank you.